Drilling jiu-jitsu techniques is going to be one of the most fundamental things you're going to do for the rest of your jiu-jitsu career. Now, often students make very common mistakes when they approach drilling. And I want to say that it's not your guys' fault. No one ever sat down with me and taught me how to focus on certain aspects when drilling. They never gave me an idea of how to improve my drilling. I would just think about it as from start to end. I wanted to do it as many times as I could, kind of just go through the motions and so on and so forth. But in today's video, I want to give you guys four secrets on really how to get the most value out of drilling, how to make it more effective and how to make it more efficient. So especially if you're a guy that's only training two or three days a week and you're the average person who's just trying to get a little bit better, this is going to be absolutely crucial for you to getting the most out of jujitsu. So hopefully we can help you guys out. So stick around. We'll talk about it right now. How's it going, everyone? My name is Jason Hill. I'm a jujitsu black belt. I've been teaching and training now for over 13 years. So if you guys like all things jujitsu, I release weekly videos. So make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button down below. That way you guys never miss the latest video whenever it comes out. So the reason why I know that these are the most common mistakes or that these secrets will work is because these are the things that I personally did wrong and that I didn't know. And now that I've been able to teach students over 13 years, I've literally taught thousands of students in person between kids and adults. Usually when I tell them these four things, it kind of either shifts their mindset about drilling or it really kind of helps them narrow in on a certain aspect to drill and maybe shifts their mindset. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is picking what to drill and why that's so important. The next thing I want us to talk about is going through what I call a drilling checklist. The third thing is we're gonna talk about the difference between quality versus quantity. And then the last thing I wanna address is the idea of how to drill with different types of training partners. So these are the four things that usually if I can get students kind of focused on, it really makes a giant impact on their jujitsu when it comes Comes to drilling, it gets them training more effectively and efficiently. So the first one we're going to start with is the idea of picking what to train. Now, first off, I want to say that sometimes you guys don't get to pick what to drill. So let me give you an example. Let's say you show up to group class and the instructor already has a technique planned. So therefore, you are now forced into drilling whatever the instructor shows. There's nothing you can do to control that aspect. You have to drill whatever they're being shown in class. This is out of respect. You know, you don't want to be the people doing totally something different or slubbing off the technique. And this all has to do with the kind of the how jujitsu is structured. So what I'm referring to is when I say pick what to drill, I'm really referring to the idea of when you guys get some free time or some open mat time and you're able to actually have the autonomy to select what to drill. Now, I highly recommend that when students focus on picking what to drill, that they drill something that's of high value. Now, what do I deem as high value? Basically, something that's actually going to make an impact on your jujitsu. Now, there's a couple of ways you can figure this out, but if we use some common sense, it really does help. So let me give you an example. If I'm a white belt and I just saw this awesome bearing bolo, but yet I'm stuck in the bottom of the mount and I'm stuck in the bottom of side control and I'm never in a position to drill or do bearing bolo in live training, then there's no reason for me to take my free time and be drilling bearing bolo. If I'm a purple belt and I have definitely opportunities and I'm trying to remember the steps and I'm trying to add this to my arsenal, then drilling bearing bolo is very important. But most of the time when I see students just pick their free time of drilling, it's like drilling a lot of their interest or their wants. It's not really them focusing on what they actually need. Often, because what you need is the stuff that you're probably already drilling in class, especially if you're a white belt or you're a newer blue belt, it's pretty basic. It's a fundamental stuff. Maybe for some of you guys, you need more drilling of the basics and fundamentals. Maybe your school doesn't cover it as much. So I highly recommend that students really figure out what is going to make a big impact if they spend time drilling. And the way that you can do that is often by understanding what your skill set is and what your areas of weaknesses are. Now, I have a bunch of other videos on this channel that talks about how to do kind of a jujitsu self-assessment that I might link right here so that way you guys can check it out after watching this video. Now, the next big one is the drilling checklist. Now, this can be applied whether you have decided what to drill on your own or you're drilling in the group class. This is where my brain kind of works and this is how I've really got students to turn 
the your perspective around on drilling. Usually the way that jiu-jitsu is taught and that we learn is we always break things down into steps. So usually we have a step one, a step two, a step three. Usually a good instructor always will break down what that order of operation is. And when you're watching and you're trying to retain this information and you're watching your instructor teach and they're going through the steps and they're showing these little pause points, start identifying a checklist for you guys to be able to go over. So that way, whenever you're drilling with your partner, you are going through the actual checklist that you created. So let me give you guys an example. Let's say I'm doing a triangle choke. First thing, step one, is I need to do some kind of arm isolation. I need to get into the triangle setup. Step two is I need to start progressing the triangle forward. I need to either move the arm across or start to set up the actual choking mechanism. The third thing is maybe now I need to maintain that and really sink in the choke and move away from the person, make sure the chin is not um, over the hip line and that I'm able to secure that. Then the fourth thing is making sure that I'm squeezing the appropriate muscles to apply the choking mechanics. So those are four steps of a triangle choke that we usually learn day one that you should be going through and making sure they're checking off. Just going through them as fast as you can and not spending time at each one poorly done and that's how you don't get much value out of it. Usually that's what I see is if I see student drilling a technique and they say they don't like drilling, I'll usually ask them, hey, show me that technique, show me how you drill it. And usually they don't like it because their drilling sucks from the outside. I can tell they're going through it as fast as they can. They're just going through the motions. They're putting no effort into it. And so, yeah, if that's how you approach drilling, drilling is absolutely the most terrible thing in the world. If you can go through and have the checklist, then it really does help. Now, sometimes your instructor may not teach with that checklist style. They may not show step by step by step, but you can create it on your own. As soon as you guys understand that taking more ownership of your own jujitsu is the way that you're going to stay on the map for a long time and to actually become a black belt, the sooner you guys will start having a lot more success. So this is one thing that I really teach my students whenever they're talking about drilling and they feel like they're getting no value. I challenge them and say, well, are you doing the checklist method? Can you list all the steps off? Can you tell me them? Are you getting out a journal? Are you writing down all the steps? Because if you're not doing all of those things, then you're not getting the most value out of drilling. So let me know, what do you guys think about drilling? Do you like drilling? Do you hate it on a scale of one to 10? You know, is it a five? Is it a four? Let me know what you guys think about drilling down in the comments below. As a quick heads up, if you guys are liking all this stuff, make sure that you guys head on over to the link down below to apply for my coaching program, where I really help students identify what they should be training, develop training plans, and you literally help them and guide them along their jiu-jitsu journey. No one ever sits down and talks to you guys about what you should be training and why that is. They just leave it up to you. And this is a lot of reason why a lot of students quit. So if you're wanting some help and if you're wanting to hack the jiu-jitsu system and get there faster, make sure you guys schedule a call with me down below. That way we can get you guys enrolled and get you going in the right direction. The third thing that students have a hard time with drilling is the idea of quality versus quantity. Now, once again, this is all piggybacking off of our first two. When we talked about picking the right things to train, and then if you have that opportunity, if you are in an open mat or something, picking the thing that's the most valuable and then going through a checklist helps you develop quality drilling, because now the only way that you can do that is by doing it slower and really being thoughtful and mindful about the drilling. If you guys are into working out, which probably a lot of you are, and you do resistance training, there's a thing that's big in the weightlifting world kind called the mind body connection. Basically, if I'm thinking about a bicep curl and I put all of my attention and my brain power into contracting and squeezing my bicep, then it is known that that actually has a benefit in the exercise. Brains are telling our muscle tissues to contract. And the more that we can increase that strength in that neural pathway, the more effective that bicep contraction becomes. And so it's the same thing in jujitsu. If you're just trying to go from A to Z, and you're not thinking about every step and you're not doing it slow and building it into those neural pathways, then you're massively missing out. Some students think that it's just about, well, if I do 50 arm locks, then I have to get better, right? I did 50 of them. There's no way I can't be better at arm locks if I do 50. Most of the time, if you do 50 arm locks and they're 50 trashy arm locks, 
it might only make you 10% better. Eh, it's not that much, right? You spent a lot of time doing 50 arm locks to only get 10% better. But what if you did those 50 arm locks and then you got like 80% better at the arm lock? That would be worth it. Now, the negative part is if you did it like that, it's probably going to take more time. It's going to slow you down. Da, 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 da. You could do 50 fast arm locks really quickly, but maybe doing 50 slow arm locks takes too much time. So this poses the question, what if you did only 10 arm locks, but you did them with elite precision and you did all the checklist and you did it super slow? I would almost argue that doing 10 arm locks like that versus 50 crappy arm locks is still more effective and you would probably spend less time doing that. It's just a thought process. So think about that the next time you're drilling is it's not about how fast you do it, it's about the quality that you do it. And then the last big one is about your drilling partner. Now, sometimes this is not always within your control. Sometimes your coach puts you with somebody and then they're absolutely the worst training partner in the world. But let me give you guys some advice about how to coach your training partner. So the way that we look at drilling is that you should look at it as in three different ways. You should have drilling where there is no resistance absolutely zero, then you have light resistance or medium resistance, and then you have heavy resistance. It's hard to have an in-between a light resistance and then a heavy resistance because that's very subjective based upon somebody's skill. But no resistance just means an absolutely cooperative partner, someone who is just not a slug and doesn't just fall over and tip over whenever you do a technique, but they're not necessarily trying to stop you. This is going to be the best way if you don't know anything about a technique. So if you're learning the move for the first time, brand new white belt, or even a blue belt, learning a move for the first time, Having a drilling partner with no resistance is super important because you just need to figure out how your joints and your limbs move. How do I get on my side? How do I put my foot in the right spot? How do I do this? And that's significantly easier if someone isn't resisting. So being a cooperative partner or having a cooperative partner is very valuable. Someone with light resistance, where this is beneficial for is spot checking. So let's say you've done this move um, you know, 50 times, let's say you have a counter somewhere and now you're wanting to make it a little bit better. This is where having light resistance is beneficial because if you missed a step or if one step wasn't as tight, right, while you're drilling it and that checklist you're going through, maybe your foot's not in the right spot or your legs aren't as tight. This is where light resistance is very valuable. Whenever you have lighter resistance, even if, even though it's light, it's going to shine a light on a weakness of yours in the technique. So having your partner being able to do light resistance is very valuable. Here's the problem. Not every training partner understands what light resistance is. One of my favorite things to do with students is to say, hey, why are you going so hard? And then they say, I'm not going that hard. And then I go get my phone and I record them and then I show them and then I let them watch it. And they're like, holy crap, I look like a demon. And I'm like, yeah. So a lot of times it takes a skilled individual to actually give you what is quote unquote known as light resistance. Someone who isn't just trying to absolutely kill you. And it's not necessarily because a student is rude or they're mean or they just don't want to help out. It's that they just don't know how to do it yet. They haven't developed that skill yet. The last resistance is then heavy resistance, which is basically rolling. So now we're kind of getting into uh, sparring at that point. Heavy resistance is going to be very valuable for battle testing the technique. Now you can do what I call positional sparring or positional drilling um, with resistance, which is basically a pass or fail method. This is a really fun one to do in a group class. I do this a lot with my students as an instructor. So I will give them a goal. The only move that you you guys can finish with today is a triangle choke. You have to start in the triangle party. Um, you have to start with one arm in, one arm out. And the only submission they can do is to catch the triangle. And then the other person is trying to escape or not let the triangle happen. And you can go full resistance. And what's cool about that is that there's only one objective for both parties. So I know that if I can finish that triangle against a really heavily resisting a person, my steps are pretty good. If I can't do it, then that means I probably need to do some more work on the triangle. Now, obviously, the reason why this is a little tough is because full resistance between a blue belt and a full resistance between a black belt is much different. That could be the difference between doing a 50-pound a barbell curl or a 200-pound barbell curl, right? 
it's still a maximum effort on your part, but who are you doing the maximum effort against? Is it max effort against the 50 pounds or the 200 pounds? So understanding that drilling can have different intensities that are appropriate at different times. Thank you guys for making it to the end of another video. Hopefully you guys found this information helpful and you can use these four secrets to actually improve the next day that you show up to your jujitsu journey. If you guys are looking for more help and more resources, make sure you download my free acceleration guide down on the bottom below. Also, if you're interested in getting some help and direct help, you can join my coaching program. The exact training system that I use that I've taught hundreds of students up to this point that are making progress every day and getting clear about their jujitsu journey. So make sure you guys train more effectively and more efficiently, and I'll see you guys in the next one.